Hello. Uh, last time we talked about uh, using the, the options in Microsoft Excel to do data fitting and we saw if we have data and uh, we plot them, we can use the trend line option to uh, uh, plot the data and find uh, uh, like the right equation that fits to this equation to this uh, data. And we already saw that we are f there are five types of equations that Microsoft Excel can fit automatically without doing any calculations from our side. And these are the linear, polynomial, logarithmic, and the, the other thing. And um, we said that uh, if we have other equation that is not um, uh, cannot be categorized in one of these categories then we can not use this option uh, of Microsoft Excel and in this case we need to do this fitting manually by ourselves and of course we can use Microsoft Excel to help us doing this uh, fitting uh, as we will see now so what we are going to do now is to we have this data and these are some experimental data and we know for some that, that this data fit to this equation which is not linear and not polynomial it's like kind of an equation that has mixed type and um, we cannot put it under any of these categories so what we are going to do now is to do the data fitting manually to see uh, what are the values of a b and c that fit with this data and uh, the method that we are going to use is called uh, least square method as you see here and we will know in a couple of minutes why it's called least square method so um, uh, what we're gonna do is simply to first assume values for a B and C and let's say I'll assume one 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 so like you can you can assume whatever uh, uh, values you want and then to I'll just um, make them in a special color to be easy to find and I'm sorry I like to do a lot of formatting anyway so uh, here we have um, the values of a b and c that we assume and the next step is to calculate the values of y based on the assumed values of a b and c so i'll make another column and call it y assumed or let's say calculated so these are the, the calculated values of uh, y based on these values by substituting in the equation that we have here so what we are going to do is to do the calculations assuming that these values are right so what you're going to do is to assume the values and then calculate the y and if the value is right then then we will find that the y calculated and the y that we got from the experiment is are close together or almost the same value and if not which is the always the case because you cannot assume the value from the first time to be right so if it's not right then they will find some difference between these two and in this case we will need to do some iterations till we find the values of a b and c uh, that make the calculated y equal to the assumed y so let's go to the first step is to assume uh, to calculate the values of y based on the assumed values of a b and c so the equation says it's a multiplied by uh, x um, plus b divided by x plus c. And now we're done. And we said last time that if we want to repeat the uh, calculation, then we can drag this uh, cell uh, to the bottom. So it will repeat the calculation to all the cells that we will drag uh, this cell into. And that's what we are going to do now but we find that there are some weird values here which is not logical to have these values uh, and if we check any one of these then we will find that it's calculating from this x which is what we need but in the same case it moved the a b and c cells to the bottom so this is not what we need so i want to do the calculation so that each cell of this column is calculated based on the corresponding x but in the same time to keep a b and c without changing their position and in this case there is something very simple that we can do is to freeze these cells which means that i'll put, do something to this j6 j7 and j8 which are these three cells so that the calculations don't change for these cells only and to move the calculation uh, corresponding to, to the corresponding x for uh, this cell so what we will do is simply to put a dollar sign before the number and before the letter and uh, you can do this manually or you can press f4 and it will do this automatically so if you do this and repeat the dragging then oops, then you'll find that it's calculating until the last cell it's calculating from the same cell so it's pretty 
important to make sure that before you drag uh, your equation to the other cells to know which cells are gonna change and what what which cells are gonna stay uh, the same and not be different calculations so this is why calculated I'll just uh, um, some formatting so it's pretty clear that the values are not the same and you as you see here this is totally different values and for this cell it's pretty pretty far from the uh, values that we want to uh, get so we can um, make a cell for difference which is y minus y calculated so it's just to make it easy for us to see the difference so this is gonna be the y minus y calculated and it's nothing new just to make the uh, seeing the difference easier so this is the error that we have in our calculations which is very very big error so we need to use one of our options in excel uh, that can change the values of these three in order to make the difference minimum or to make it zero if possible so uh, we can go ahead and get the sum of this of this cell um, so just before we go this uh, the the option that we can use in excel is the solver and as we recall from our one previous video that the solver can change more than one cell that's what we see here cells not one cell but uh, it's only one target cell that we can uh, target so I cannot ask Excel to change a B and C to make all these cells zero so what we can do is to get the sum of these cells and then and then ask Excel to make this sum zero by changing this three and presumably if this cell is zero then all these cells will be zero but this is not gonna happen because in this case Microsoft Excel can change the values of a B and C to make the sum zero but this is not gonna guarantee that all these cells are zeros because you have positive and negative values and you may have negative and positive values and they will all end up to be summation of zero but they are not zeros so what we do now is to get the square of this difference so I'll do y minus y calculated and then to make it squared so what we what we do now actually is we get rid of all the negative values because the square is gonna be positive always uh, so it's always gonna be positive regardless the difference is positive or negative so in this case we uh, we <clears throat> we can get the the sum of this so we can now write that this sum is uh, is is uh, is gonna be zero if all these cells are zeros we don't have the problem of having some cells are positive and some are negative so now we can use our solver in data ribbon and then go to solver and I want to make this cell to the value of zero by changing cells a b and c and let's see what we get so okay so it's now almost solved we have uh, the values of a b and c 0 0.02, 27.2, and 1.45, and the sum is almost uh, zero. And if you see that th these differences is, is not big as it was before, it's not perfect, but it's okay. We, we agreed last time that we have some error in calculations, or I mean in experiments, and we now can see how uh, good the fitting is that we'll see right now. So. Um, we did the first thing that Excel did before with the data fitting is that we got the equation or the constant of the equation and the second thing is to get the accuracy of this uh, fitting so uh, the accuracy uh, can be got easily by simple calculation and actually the equation that Excel uses to calculate the least square the, the root mean square value which is this R square is this I got this from the Excel help and it's very helpful if you need anything in Excel and you don't know how to get it it's 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 very simple to go to Excel help and then search for whatever you want and that's what I did I found this in the Excel help so let's see what these terms are so this y is the the y from the experiment y calculated that this y calculated and uh, this n is the number of uh, data points we have 
so let's get every one of these uh, cells separately and then calculate r square uh, directly so um, we have now this term here this is the summation of uh, y minus y calculate square this is what we have now and now we need to get the summation of y square um, so i'll put another column here uh, to be y power 2 and this is gonna be um, the y power 2 thing and then we need the submission I'm sure I like to do a lot of formatting but just to make the thing this file look uh, nice so now I have this submission of y square which is this term and then the submission of y square so just to note the difference between these two you have the submission of y square then you square then you get the sum but here you get the sum and then square it so that's what we are gonna get from here it's sum of these cells and then power 2 so now we have this term this term and this term we only need to get the n so n is the number of cells and we can simply get it from one of the excel um, formulas or uh, options so if you write count then this counts the number of cells that you are highlighting so i'll highlight all the cells that we have and then we'll find that n equals 3 so now i have everything to calculate r square and now i am ready to go so it's 1 minus this summation divided by summation of y square which is this minus summation of y power 2 over n and now we are good to go so now the fitting is 96.9699 which is pretty good it's almost 97 percent accurate uh, fitting um and one thing i did is that uh, this is uh, just a plot of the y calculated versus the y uh, that we uh, got from the experiment and it's it's clear that they are almost uh, the same fit but just this point is not very good but the fitting is very good so this um this is just a demonstration so what we did today is to we we know now how can we uh, do the data fitting for any equation that even it's, it's not in the excel uh, data fitting uh, trend line option and we know now how to calculate the root mean square value to get how accurate the fitting is and uh, this can be applied to any equation regardless uh, uh, it's linear or nonlinear. i uh, hope this helps thanks